Hey everybody, this is the Josh Meister, Josh Long from Mac Tech Magazine, and uh, on the podcast today we have Kurt Schmucker, and he's the Senior Evangelist at uh, Mac Team at Microsoft, and it's great to have you on the show, Kurt. Thanks for, for being here today. Thank you for inviting me. Happy to be here. So uh, Kurt is going to talk with us about Office 2011, which is coming up really soon. Uh, it's Microsoft's next big release of Office for the Macintosh. Um, there are a lot of features that uh, have been announced already, some that haven't been yet, but we're, we're going to talk with Kurt about, about some of the things that, uh, that are new that, that Microsoft has announced so far about Office 2011. Um, so w one of the things that, that I think a lot of our listeners are going to be interested in, probably a lot of, uh, a lot of the people who, who listen or watch the show um, are, you know, m many of them are probably Exchange users. They, they use Exchange in their corporate environment. Um, one of the things that I think they're going to be really interested in is that Office 2011 is going to be the first version of Office for the Mac that has Outlook instead of Entourage. And so, Kurt, can you tell us a little bit about what, what are some of the differences between Entourage in uh, Office 2008 and, uh, and Outlook in Office 2011? There are a number of things that we've already revealed about the release of Outlook 2011 in the next in the suite for Office for Mac. Um, people who are familiar with our work over the last several years will know that we've been steadily increasing the amount of support for Exchange trying to get in more of the Exchange features, make them more available, especially, as you mentioned, to people who use their Macs in an enterprise or a corporate environment. And so we released last summer a version of Entourage, Entourage EWS, that used a brand new protocol that was designed in conjunction with the Exchange team called Exchange Web Services, EWS. And so the new version, um, Outlook 2011, uses that new protocol so we're real happy about that. But from the beginning, the entire user interface of Outlook 2011 was implemented from scratch using all the latest tools from Apple. Uh, uh, core animation, using all the new tools available to a Mac developer in the Xcode environment and so on, and making a, we think a really great experience for the uh, Mac user. One of the things we've added is a request uh, from large numbers of our customers to redo, redesign the way uh, our email client stores data so you can use Time Machine to back up all your email. In That's the really entourage cool. experience, you couldn't do that. And that was true for any application that had extraordinarily large files that changed in very small ways uh, each day. Uh, and Entourage was one of those. And the experience was so poor we recommended people not back up their entourage database with Time Machine. Mm -hmm. That's a real problem because people want to use Time Machine is a great, you know, a great tool. It's a great Mac experience. People want to use it. So we have completely redesigned the database. So it's Time Machine friendly and it also works even better with Spotlight for searching. Oh, great. That's that's really cool. Uh, that, that'll be definitely a nice, a nice feature. Very welcome, I, I think, to a lot of people. One thing that I saw, uh, I know Microsoft has released a couple of videos about Office 2011 so far, and one of the things, uh, and of course you star in one of those videos, um, and one of the things that I really thought was fascinating about, uh, about your video um, was you talked about how when, when it comes to document design, and, and the way that, that it looks on the screen and the way that, uh, that it looks when it's printed out. Um, do, you, do you want to tell us a little, a little bit about that? Sure. So the ability to have file format compatibility between Office for Windows and Office for Mac has been one of the premier values that we deliver to Mac users in our suite. I mean, the, after all, there are over a billion computers in the world with Office installed. People are exchanging files with those individuals. And if you're on the Mac, you want to make sure those are they're readable, that you, the things you do, documents you design, render the same way when they're read by an Office for Windows user. Right. We've always had a high degree of compatibility, but we've tried to even make it higher in Office 2011. And so the anecdote I told in the video was in the Word team, they'll actually take a document, print it out with, off, with Word for Windows, Print it out with Word for Macintosh. Take the two pieces of paper and hold them up to the light. 
And if there's any difference when they, over, when they overlap, we file that as a bug and we try to get that fixed. And that can be even something like as simple as word broke at a different, a line broke at a different place, a word broke at a different place, a page mm -hmm. broke at a different place. And the reason that's important, if you and I were collaborating on a document and I said to you, hey, Josh, look at page 13. I think the second paragraph has a problem. And you go, um, there is no second paragraph on page 13 <laughs> because yours broke in a different place. And that really breaks the collaboration model. Um, and so that, that we've looked, spent a lot of time in doing that. And we've upped the bar for compatibility for Word and PowerPoint and Excel. And we're real, real pleased about that. That, that's really exciting. That that was my favorite part, I think, of both of the videos was, wow, they, they print up both documents, hold them up to the light and check for bugs. You know, that's that's so awesome. I, I, I love that idea. Um, and that, so, that's partially why we're, uh, Office for Macintosh always comes out a little bit later than Office for Windows because we want to guarantee compatibility with them. I mean, they're the bigger installed base. And so it's our job to make sure our Office for Mac works really well with Office for Windows documents. Um, this year, you know, they came out in June. We're going to come out in October. So there's only like a you know, five or six month delay. I think mm -hmm. that's acceptable to Mac users. Um, yeah. And yeah. especially when you, we, we, can, we can say the reason for that is we're putting that extra time to make sure that documents are compatible and the experience is going to be just great for you. Right. Um see what what else can I ask you about what what are some other uh, new features that have been announced so far that you really like about about office 2011 I'll, I'll tell you about a feature that I'm guessing you've never, maybe never even experienced and that's in, in an enterprise environment there's a Microsoft technology called IRM information information rights management okay and what that lets me do I can send you an email message and put IRM protection on it you can read the message but you can't forward it. You can't copy the contents to someplace else. I'm controlling that content even after I've sent it to you. We've okay. never had IRM support in Office for Mac before. And in 2011, we have it, of course, in Outlook because it's an email client, but also in Word and PowerPoint and Excel. So if I take a, a, an email and I protect it with certain rights and then I put an attachment there, those rights flow down to the attachment. And that's a, a, a capability that our enterprise customers have asked for for a long time now. And we, we were able to get it done in Office 2011, and we're really looking forward to it being available so the Mac users are not cut out of conversations in their companies or that a company that wanted to deploy that kind of a technology to protect their intellectual property wasn't stopped from deploying it because it would have cut their Mac users out from that stream. And so that's I think, a big feature that we've, we've talked about already that we've released or that we, that we have that we will release in 2011. Okay. That's, that sounds cool too. It's a, so it's a collaboration feature that, that ensures the security of uh, information that's being transmitted through, through that feature. Exactly correct. Okay. Exactly correct. Cool. Um, in, anything else you can think of? Another feature that we've added in uh, Word and PowerPoint and Excel is the ability to do simple kinds of image editing or image enhancement oh, yeah. right inside the application. So I bring in a photo. Photo looks great, but I wish that only the subject was there. I wish the whole background was removed. Mm -hmm. So background removal is pretty tricky, but it's yeah. really it's just a just a couple of clicks now of your mouse. Staying in PowerPoint or Word or Excel, you can do that background removal. You can do color correction. You can do other sorts of image enhancement. What's great about this is that you don't have to leave the application you're currently working in, whether it's Word, Excel, or PowerPoint, to do photo editing tasks, even complex ones like background removal or color correction. So another feature that the Office for Windows teams put a lot of investment in was investing in new styles of collaboration and co-authoring in the Office for Windows suite. And I'm real happy to tell you that all those investments also work in the Office for Mac suite. And this involves a number of things. For example, you and I could co-author an article. We could even be writing into the same Word document at the same time. That's a pretty impressive thing to, feat to pull off, I think. And what it does in the case of Word, for example, it locks the document at the paragraph level. 
if you've ever used a file-based service to uh, share a document with multiple authors, typically there's a notion of this document's been checked out by Josh. Uh -huh. And I only had like a half hour to work on it, but it's checked out. I can't even put my edits in. Well, that, that kind of thing becomes a thing of the past because now we can actually co-author at exactly the same time on exactly the same document. And this is all possible now because of the investments Microsoft has made in cloud storage, either in SkyDrive for consumers or SharePoint for enterprises. And these collaboration styles um, even include things like editing your document from a computer that doesn't even have Office installed on it, doing all your editing from inside a web browser with the so-called Office web apps, which are uh, light versions of PowerPoint and Word and Excel that allows you to do basic editing on that document in the cloud when you need to make a last-minute revision or something just before you make a presentation, that sort of thing. Um, and that same uh, capability with that same storage in the cloud allows scenarios like co-authoring. And I think those are going to really change the way people work. And they, they also, the, all these scenarios I've just mentioned, work cross-platform. So I could be on a Windows machine, you could be on your Mac. We've added a feature in Excel, um, to Mac Excel, that was also added in Excel for Windows, called Sparklines. Oh, yeah. If you haven't seen it, it's really, really cool. It's the ability to do little tiny graphs inside a single spreadsheet cell that give you a sort of understanding of the data that's, that's in front of you. And they have to be seen to be believed. They're really, really slick. And you really can get an understanding of a lot of data really quickly in a small space. Of course, the problem with you know lots of graphs and stuff, they're all wonderful, wonderful but they take up lots of room. And this is a new way of doing that. And it's well supported in Excel, and it's a really nice way to get an understanding of your data really, really quickly. Most people don't relate well to large tables of numbers, but to a collection of graphs, they can get the gestalt of the data very, very quickly. Sparklines gives the ability to present a lot of graphical information in a really small space. We, one other thing we've added in both Word and Excel and PowerPoint, we've always shipped Office for Mac with really nice looking templates. So people could get a head start on doing a really professional looking document. And I'm, I'm really proud of our templates, but there only were, you know, a couple hundred or so. We've added in Office 2011 the ability for a Mac user to access all the online templates on Microsoft.com, which is literally tens of thousands of templates. Wow. And so the advantage there is you're probably going to find exactly the one you want to run the snacks for the soccer league that you ma manage as a, as a parent or something right. because somebody else has contributed it there. So these are not just templates done by Microsoft people. These are done by Office users and contributed to that online repository. And you get at them in exactly the same way you get at the templates we ship with Office. So there's no extra steps involved. No, you have to, don't have to go to a browser, download something, unpack it with Stuff It. No, <laughs> it's all just right there in the application. And I'm, I'm really excited about how that's going to enable people to get, get more stuff done more quickly with Office 2011. That sounds really exciting. Well, it's, it's been a lot of fun talking with you, Kurt. We really appreciate you coming on the show and telling us a, a little bit about Office 2011. And, and uh, we, we look forward to hearing more about it and trying it when it comes out. Very good. Thank you so much for inviting me.